this is about uh, Bursa. Hi, uh, Uncivilized Vitality, Dr. Mori here. This is a quick um, video about, uh, let's go in the anatomy playlist. So we're gonna talk about uh, Bursa. Bursa um, is, is singular, Bursa is, there's, there's more than one. So a Bursa, uh, I, I say to patients a lot of time, you might have a Bursitis. A Bursitis is a common condition that uh, afflicts a lot of people. It's very painful. And then um, that, and students ask me, well, what the hell is a Bursa? So we're gonna explain what a bursa is, thus bursitis. When you put the uh, suffix I-T-I-S on the end of anything, it just indicates inflammation. So very quickly, a bursa is a fluid-filled uh, sac that performs the function of reducing friction or contact between the structures in your body. So uh, there are about 160 bursa, bursae, in your body. Uh, they're located in all sorts of uh, locations. They're difficult to dissect out because they're uh, fluid-filled structures that are located in uh, different fascial layers and they tend to dry out very quickly post-mortem. So we don't see a lot of, we don't find a lot of bursa in the, uh, bursa in the uh, cadaver lab. So you're going to find bursa in four main areas between skin and muscle, uh, between um, skin and bone, between tendon and bone, between muscle and tendon, between tendon and tendon. So you'll find them all over the place. You'll find, like, I have a, a bursa around the long head of my biceps brachii to kind of um, reduce friction in that groove. I have a pre-patellar or sub-patellar bursae around my kneecap uh, to prevent bone on bone. Um, I have a lot of bursae wrapped around the tendons in my wrist and ankles where the, the tendons uh, slide by each other. Uh, those elongated sort of tubular uh, bursae would be called a synovial sheath or a tendinous sheath. So there's about 160 bursa in the body. What a bursa is, is a connective tissue uh, sort of blob or sac, and it, it's connected in, in the connective tissue, in the fascia. Um, but the inside layer of the bursa is actually synovial membrane. And synovial membrane uh, produces synovium. So it's going to uh, produce these little drops of fluid and it, uh, focused inwardly, it's going to produce uh, the synovial fluid inside the bursa, and then it becomes an incompressible, because uh, fluid, hydraulic nature of fluids, incompressible, becomes an incompressible blob. Uh, but because it's a loosely formed sac with the dense or uh, irregular connective tissue outer layer and the synovial inner layer, it allows the structure, for instance, if I had a, a tendon uh, running here, and underneath there's a, like a humerus uh, or a bone, a kneecap, and I have another bone here. This is going to keep that tendon from rubbing directly on that bone uh, and, and prevent the buildup of friction uh, in tissues that have to slide over each other. Because it's made up of synovial membrane, it uh, a couple things to remember. One, it's innervated. So synovial membrane has innervation. It can sense pain and, and pressure and such. This is why an inflamed bursa, when you have bursitis, is going to be uh, difficult because the joint, perhaps, that it um, uh, you're dealing with the bursitis in, now you're going to have loss of function uh, or at least painful function. Um, the synovial membrane and the connective tissue membrane of the bursa are also what is known as a, a semi-permeable. So structures, uh, fluid structures can, uh, you're gonna get the, the raw materials from the blood supply, the capillary beds that the synovial membrane uses to make the synovial fluid. But you can also have structures coming in and out. Uh, you can get an infiltration of white blood cells when you've got maybe an infection or um, um, waste is kind of being squeezed out. You get some effect on bursitis during it for pressure too, but that's, uh, we're gonna be on the scope of the, the quick video. So a bursa, there's about 160 to 100 and let's say 150 to 170, about 160 bursa in the body that you can name. They're in the structures between, uh, mostly around tendons, between tendons and tendons, and uh, between bone and muscle, between muscle and skin, between skin and bone, like in my elbow, there's, uh, there's just skin that rubs over my elbow to decrease the friction there. I have these, uh, uh, you know, bursa in there. So, um, that's the function of the bursa. You're gonna be, you get those inflamed a lot because they're made of synovial membrane and, and innervated, they can be very, very painful. And uh, bursitis is very, very common. 
you fall on an elbow or you fall on a knee or you, you get uh, hit in a bony protuberance uh, and then it aches. I have patients come in all the time and uh, you know we'll, we might have to do some imaging or we'll do palpation, we, uh, di I diagnose uh, bursitis. And I have to be careful to say, to, to not say it's just bursitis because uh, it's glad it's not a fracture or an, you know, an evulsion or a sprain or a strain, but bursitis is pretty painful. Uh, a couple ways to treat bursitis. Because it's semi-permeable, we might want more uh, fluid in the area, get the uh, capillary uh, beds opened up, dilation of, of blood vessels, and bring more uh, blood to the area, in which case we would use heat. Um, and we might want to decrease the blood flow to the area for that particular bursa, depending on the circumstances, in which case we'd use ice. So when people ask me, well, what should I do, ice or heat? It sounds like a dodge, but it just depends. So um, bursa, bursitis, there's a lot of them. Um, they're exquisitely painful. They serve basically the function of reducing friction so you can move around freely. For an anatomy student, what's important about the bursa are the four functions, so like where you would find them, and um, in particular, their names. We're not gonna see them in the cadaver lab though because once uh, post-mortem and you don't have as much um, um, Lividity, you know, after you're dead, you're not going to have uh, many standout bursas. Although sometimes we do find uh, a calcified uh, bursa in the, the cadavers. So that's it. That's bursa. Put this. Uh, we'll put this in the anatomy uh, lecture uh, playlist, and that way, um, mostly people that are anatomically motivated can check that out. And if uh, maybe patients or anybody that's curious as to why your elbow hurts when you've landed on it and the bruise has gone away, these will take. Uh, longer than skin. So you're going to put these in the connective tissue uh, arena. So I guess that's one last thing. I always use the uh, the doubling when I advise patients, uh, skin, muscle, and then bone or connective tissue as far as healing rates. If I have a bruise on my elbow, the skin bruise will go away about two weeks. The muscle tissue underneath, that bruise will take four weeks. So double that. And then the uh, if I damaged or uh, incurred some bursitis or a tendon or a bone, so-called bone bruise, periosteum bone, I would double uh, or I would add another two. So I would take six weeks. So once that bruise is healed up on the surface, my elbow still hurts, give it another um, another four weeks and see if it goes away. Because just because of the, the vasculature and how, and how quickly these things heal. So uh, that's it for bursas. Um, I would encourage you to, to uh, leave comments below, more questions, give me other um, ideas for anatomy videos that are kind of off the, the, the minor branch of main anatomy. Um, be great if you liked the video and shared the channel, subscribe to the channel, and um, I think that's about it. Okay.